so uh, so in this let's begin our lecture with the heat exchanger uh, in this we will discuss the heat exchangers so uh, so let's start our lecture with the contents that are shown in this uh, in the screen that we will start with the definition we will discuss the definitions the types of the heat exchangers the flows in the heat exchangers the parts of heat exchangers particularly in this lecture we will discuss the part for the heat ex uh, simple pipe or the double pipe heat exchangers um, in next lecture we will discuss the uh, temperatures and allocation of the fluid may be discussed in the later lectures so uh, we will solve the shell and tube heat exchanger problems one for the parallel flow and then for the counter flow and we will also solve the uh, one problem on the double pipe heat exchangers so uh, let's start with the definition of the heat exchangers according to current Heat exchangers are defined or the exchangers are defined as exchangers recovers heat between the two process stream. Before uh, clarifying this definition, uh, we will discuss what is the direct heat recovery and indirect heat recovery. Direct heat recovery we, we will we can uh, we can achieve uh, without heat exchangers but with the recirculations. We will discuss this recirculation concept in the later slides. And for indirect heat recovery, we use the uh, heat exchangers. That's our topic. So, exchangers are those which recovers heat indirectly between the two process streams. One process stream, uh, one stream is the hotter, another stream is the lower. So, these are exchanging uh, exchanging the heats. So, indirect heat recovery. The in indirect heat recovery, the two fluid streams are separated by the heat transfer surface area. So, in indirect heat recovery, one fluid, hotter fluid, is entering in the annulus. Annulus is the space between the two pipes, and the cold fluid is entering in the inner pipe. Uh, as they move, uh, they exchange the heat, and the upper surface of the inner pipe is the heat transfer area so it is uh, so these fluid are separated by this upper surface heat transfer area so uh, this is the upper surface heat transfer area so let's take the example of the sulfuric acid plant although there are the many uh, many many applications of the heat exchangers in the industry but uh, we will uh, but i will give you the example uh, of the sulfuric acid plant because the chemical engineering starts from the sulfuric acid plant uh, so in this uh, we in sulfuric acid plant the exchanger cools the h2s uh, so i will tell you some story about the sulfuric acid plant uh, like um, in sulfuric acid plant when hot gases leaves the burner at elevated temperature which is about 1100 degrees centigrade uh, which enters in the waste heat boiler section in which the gases are cooled about 500 degrees centigrade so in this the gases from 1100 to 500 uh, there is a temperature difference and it is uh, cooled about the 500 degrees centigrade and stream is generated so like this way the process is going uh, goes on so in last is that before storage of the h2so4 we want to cool the h2so4 which was about 900 degrees uh, 90 degrees centigrade for cooling this h2so4 we use the heat exchangers in which it will pass the heat to the cold fluid and it will becomes the cool and uh, then it will go for the storage so this is the application of the heat exchanger heat exchangers are mainly used or commonly used we can say in the um, petroleum refining in the fertilizers in chemical industries like sulfuric acid plant nitric acid plant uh, or maybe in the coal uh, coal plants like these things so 
another definition is that a device in which the two fluid streams one is the hotter another is the colder one so as we know the temperature uh, uh, temperature uh, if there if the both fluids will be at the same temperature then there will be no heat transfer one fluid temperature should be more than the other fluid temperature or we can say the one fluid should be the hotter and another fluid should be the cold which are brought together into thermal uh, maybe there is a mistake into the thermal contact in order to effect heat transfer from the hot fluid stream towards the cold fluid as we know that uh, heat is transferring from the high temperature to lower temperature so in this the fluid is transferring from the uh, from fluid transfer from the hot fluid stream towards the cold fluid stream uh, so as we can see in this the types of the heat exchangers and uh, that we are using the most commonly we are using the double pipe heat exchanger shell and tube heat exchanger and a plate and frame heat exchangers so according to contact techniques it is classified as direct and indirect contact according to construction it is defined as the tabular which may be the double pipe shell and tube and the spiral and the plate plate and frame spiral plate heat exchangers extended surface plate film tube fin and regenerators according to the flow arrangement we have the single pass and the multi pass single pass includes parallel flow counter flow and the cross flow and the multi pass may be the parallel flow counter flow split flow divided flow these may be uh, in the uh, shell and tube heat exchangers and then we have according to surface compactness we have the non compact in which the surface area density is less than 700 meters square per meter cube and compact and with surface area density is greater than the 700 meter cube meter square per uh, meter cube uh, so in this uh, so in this we have the flow arrangement of basic flow arrangement that we are using in the heat exchangers number one is the parallel flow counter current flow number two cross flow and hybrid flow most commonly we are using the counter flow because it gives a higher heat transfer than the parallel flow why it gives a higher heat transfer than parallel flow we will discuss in next slides and then we have the cross flow in which the flows angle is the 90 degree uh, right angle so and then with the hybrids hybrids maybe the counter um, cross counter both may be in the um, one exchangers or multi pass like in this the multi pass uh, there are the multi pass one pass second pass like third four like these passes and these are the counter flow and counter flow uh, both fluid direction are same uh, both fluid moves parallel and the counter current the uh, their direction are opposite one moves towards the right and other moves towards the left and in the cross flow and uh, the one fluid moves from the left to right and uh, and the um, other move other hotter fluid moves from up to down uh, it may be the right angle so uh, so now uh, we will discuss about the uh, parallel flow uh, in parallel flow the temperature difference between the hot fluid and the cold fluid decreasing from inlet to outlet so for explaining this let us consider this is the flow arrangement and in this the hot fluid are passing and it will leaving exit from the bottom of the uh, right side and the cold fluid is will be in the same direction and it is also existing at the right side so in this uh, for explaining this uh, above uh, first point let us consider the temperature profile of the parallel flow uh, it seems like this uh, both fluid are in the same direction this is for the hot fluid and this is for the cold fluid so in this as you can see here the delta t temperature difference is maximum but here the temperature difference is less than than uh, as compared to the starting one so uh, here 
the heat transfer will be maximum at the fluid flows along the pipe uh, the heat transfer uh, the heat transfer will be decreases at this point the heat transfer is less because change in temperature is less but here the heat transfer is more because the change in temperature is more uh, so as from uh, from first one it is clear that the temperature difference between the hot and cold fluid decreasing along the inlet to outlet and the temperatures are both fluid temperatures are increasing along the pipe so it really provide the larger surface area and so it does it, it does not provide the maximum heat transfer for this problem there is one solution uh, so we can increase the heat transfer area but it will cost much and it will require the more space and it is less efficient than the counter current and the temperature of the cold fluid existing the heat exchanger can never exceed the lowest temperature of the hot fluid this is the main point uh, it means that uh, temperature of the hot fluid and temperature of the cold fluid suppose this inlet temperature of the hot fluid is about 100 and it exists at the maybe we can 60 degree centigrade and the temperature of the cold fluid is about 10 degree centigrade and it existing at the um, 30 degree centigrade so this point says the temperature of the cold fluid to exist and uh, the temperature this temperature of the cold fluid at the exist which is 30 degree can never exceeds the lower temperature of the hot fluid so this is the lower temperature of the hot fluid you can see the difference in this it never exceeds the 60 degree centigrade it will always uh, blow the 60 degree centigrade in parallel flow uh, so in the counter flow as we can see in the counter flow arrangement it is the counter flow sorry it may be it is the counter flow in counter flow the temperature difference between the two fluid streams are more remains more and less nearly constant this means that this is the our arrangement uh, wait, wait. this is our arrangement let me talk correctly so in this one fluid is passing here and existing here and one fluid is moving towards the opposite direction so both fluid directions are opposite to one another in this for explaining this let us consider the temperature profile of the counter current it seems to be like this so in this there is, this is the hot fluid profile because it's losing the temperature and uh, it may be uh, this is the wait and this is the cold fluid profile which is gaining the temperature it's, its temperature is increasing so this is the th1 th2 tc1 t as you can see the hot fluid temperature is going down and the cold fluid temperature is going up so in this the temperature difference throughout from inlet to exit remains same so here will be the temp here will the heat transfer will be maximum in the center the heat transfer will be remain same maximum and in the outlet the heat transfer will remain same and maximum because there is no variation in the profiles but there is a little bit very variation uh, we encountered uh, but it will be very less variation so in this there are you as you can see the from inlet to outlet the temperature difference remains same and the maximum so it will provide the maximum heat transfer so gives maximum heat transfer rate for a given surface area it, it does not require the larger surface area as compared to the parallel flow for giving the maximum heat transfer rate the outlet temperature of the cold fluid can approach the highest temperature of the same fluid so uh, so in similarly like before if the cold fluid if the hot fluid temperature inlet is 100 and it leaves at 60 and the cold fluid temperature is 10 
and it's leave at maybe um uh hundred maybe we can say maybe ninety we can assume that so or it may be the hundred but I will choose the ninety so in this the outlet temperature of the cold fluid can approach the highest temperature of the cold fluid in this as you can see it is approaching approximately the highest temperature of the hot fluid so highest temperature of the hot fluid is 100 degree centigrade so, and it is 90 degree centigrade it is approximately approach it is 90 degree centigrade and it's approximately approaching the 100 degree centigrade which is the highest temperature of the fluid so we use this flow commonly in the heat ex uh, in the industries because it is the more desired flow so uh, we will discuss the double pipe heat exchangers so in this, this as you can see as you see the picture of the double pipe heat exchangers so in this the one fluid which is the b uh, this is the fluid b passing in the inner pipe this is the inner pipe and the fluid a is flows in the annular space between the tubes or poop two pipes as you can see the flow is flowing in the annular space like this so it will move down from here and again it will move like the again it will uh, again it will move from here downside so as you can these bands it does not provide the heat transfer area it's it does not calculate it uh, it, it is not uh, it is not required level calculations because it does not provide the heat transfer area as you can see the hot flows passing from here not from here so only from here the cold fluid will be passed and again here the heat transfer will again start it and here again the hot fluid will pass no heat transfer and again from here the uh, heat transfer will occur so like this the process is going on uh, one is hotter fluid another is colder fluid so hotter fluid uh, it's our choice whether we we want to introduce the hotter fluid in the shell side or in the uh, annular side or in the inner pipe so we'll discuss this in the later lecture how we will decide these so we would provide larger surface area so when we are using the parallel flow it will provide the lower surface area and then we are using the counter flow it may provide the larger surface area uh, means the area remains same but in parallel flow the heat transfer will be the less but in the uh, we can see in counter in the counter current the heat transfer will be the more as the temperature difference remains same so in led to outlet it is also called the annular or the concentric tube heat exchangers although it provides the lower heat transfer area but still nowadays in industry we are using for uh, for the fluid in which we doesn't we in which we doesn't want to transfer heat more uh, just for the little transfer of the heat so over there we are using this so in this uh, the double pipe heat exchangers consist of the two pairs of the concentric pipes arranged these are the two pairs one is the annular outer pipe another is the inner pipe they are these are the concentric concentric arrangement uh, this is the concentric arrangement and and the batteries of the hairpins connected in the series or parallel arrangement this may be connected in the series or may be connected in the series or parallel arrangement commonly employed to provide surface area heat transfer if you want more heat transfer if if you want uh, more heat transfer uh, surfaces so we will use the uh, series parallel arrangement it will provide the more heat transfer area so the uh, this u uh, this all u is uh, we call this as the pin hairpin like because hairpin it seems like this it, it also seems like this this is this all one u is called the hairpin so more hairpins are required if you want the larger heat transfer area or if you want larger heat transfer services uh, so more uh, so area will be the more hot fluid and cold fluid so in this the hot fluid is uh, passed through the annular and the cold fluid in the tubes 
if we pass remember that if we pass the hot fluid in the annular so we need the insulation uh, in the outer pipe and in, in place, and the insulation will cost us and if and the solution for this uh, is that we will uh, we introduce the hot fluid in the inner pipe so and the colder fluid in the outer pipe so in that so in that case the insulation cost will be the neglected so counter current and the co-current arrange uh, flow is achieved in double pipe heat exchangers outer pipe is insulated that i discuss when we are introducing the hot fluid in the annular uh, in in the annular and um, we we usually requires the insulation so uh, this is the gland return gland return head t gland this i will, uh, this will be discussed in the next slide uh so in this uh we uh there are these these are several components uh we use while uh making the heat exchangers although this is the mechanical parts of the heat exchangers uh double pipe heat exchanger so this uh, it's not uh, these are the some common parts that we are using one is the nozzle another is the return band another is the gland and another is the annulus or trees so as you can see in the pictures uh, the picture of the return gland return head and uh, the glands that we are using annular nozzles nozzles are here uh, with the t's and these are the glands uh which supports the two pipes and this is the return beds which helps to pass the inner flow to the uh, uh second uh, leg of the pin and uh, so in this the uh, nozzles what are the, uh, what are the first of all we will discuss what are the t's t's are used to connect the one pipe to another pipe uh, from uh, like inner pipe to the outside uh, to the out, other pi uh, outer pipe and the nozzles uh, nozzles these are connected or provided to the inner and the outer pipe facilitate to, to facilitate the connections of the process piping and this is the return band return band helps to pass inside fluids to the second leg of the pin and uh, and the maximum nozzle size is equals to the size of the outer die of the uh, heat exchanger pipe and this is the annulus annulus the space between the two pipes this is the pipe and this is the another pipe and this is space is called the annular in which the hot fluid or whether the cold fluid is flowing uh, mainly the hot fluid is flowing in the annulus and then uh, and then we have the inner pipes are connected with the return bands as you can see this is the inner pipe we are connected with the return band and one of the important thing is the sagging that we encountered in the double pipe heat exchangers uh, in the double pipe heat exchangers so its limit is about the 20 feet uh, so in this uh, we can see that if we use the heat exchange uh, this hair pins length if the length of this hairpin exceeds the 20 feet we can exceed and we can join the these pipes with the return bands but the, but the one disadvantage of this exceeding is that when it exceeds this 20 feet it will cause the sagging so in this the length of the pipe is generally kept to the maximum 20 feet uh so maximum can't is because the weight of the uh, because the weight of the pipe may cause the pipes to sag uh sag is that uh, um, uh, it will move towards the downside and it will touch the outer pipe like this is the inner pipe this is this is like this and this is the annular it will and touch the outer pipe and it will disturb our operation and it will also disturb the annulus flow so as in the distillation um with the distillation we use the heat exchangers so, so add in the distillation we can use the double pipe heat exchangers but it will really requires the larger area because uh, the heat transfer services are more more over there and the 
more hair pins will be required for the double by feet exchangers and it will cover the a lot of the space so for for this we have the and then we have the arrangements of the double pie one is a simple double pie multiple tube double pie twisted sheet inserts or we can say twisted sheet arrangements so in this um, in multiple tubes multiple tubes are uh, available in the multiple tubes are available in which the inner pipe is replaced by the u-tube in which this is the inner pipe and it is replaced by the u-tubes like this and in the simple double pipe it's like simple pipe and twisted insert is like this in the inner pipe there is a one twisted sheet as you can see in this picture it will cause the turbulence of the fluid and uh, with this turbulence our heat transfer will be the increased so there are some points that should be noted that outer pipe ranging in the size from 3 to 6 inches maximum size 36 inches for the multiple tube heat exchangers and the outer pipe size ranging for double pipe heat exchanger simple double pipe heat exchanger is from 2 to 8 inches for the inner pipe and from 3 by 4 to 6 inches for the outer pipe as you as you can see in the this in this slide so in this there are several uh, types of the twisted sheets arrangement and in this we can calculate the this length of the twisted sheet and the surface of the twisted sheet and formulas are present in the textbooks you can find them and we can use this but uh, our calculation will be the more complex and it will be the more lengthy uh, but we can calculate this type of the calculations so in this there are several arrangement of the twisted sheets are used as you can see and sometimes this space is uh, becoming larger or sometimes it's becoming smaller like this and sometimes we are two twisted sheets we are using three multiples like this arrangement we are using like this arrangement we are using it is it is for our desired whether which arrangement we want to choose and it totally depend upon the inner dia of the pipe if the inner dia of the pipe is the larger then we can use this arrangement if the inner pipe of the dia is smaller we can use this arrangement it's depend upon our choices or our service or our services so for the it will uh, the inner pipe may be in the form of the longi uh, longitudinal film uh, fins so a longitudinal film is that in the inner pipes these types of fins are connected usually these fins we are using when we are using the gases because the gases heat transfer coefficient is less it requires the larger surface area and turbulence for this we use this um, longitudinal fins similarly these things we are using in the challenge two heat exchangers for increasing the surface area this is the longitudinal film we can calculate its width, its length, its surface, formulas are there. Uh, similarly, for this, the calculation will be the more lengthy and the complex, but we can calculate. As you can see in the this, in this picture, the hot fluid is passing and the cold fluid is passing in the inner pipe and the hot fluid in the outer pipe. Uh, so it will or outer or cold fluid in the outer pipe and the, or the hot fluid in the inner pipe. So it depends up, upon you so in uh, so there are you can see there are the fins it will divide the flows and maximum heat transfer will be there uh, as you can see in the outer dia this is the inner tube and this is the fins and these are three types of the longitudinal fins arrangement that we can use depending upon our uh, service so as in this uh, in this slide we can see that uh, we will discuss the some double pipe heat exchangers um, what types of the heat transfer methods are involving in the double pipe heat exchangers so these are the convection or conduction convection and radiation it does not play a role maybe in case of the double pipe heat exchangers but we usually encountered with the um, conduction and the convection so for understanding this as we know the conduction is between the solids and convection is uh, from solid to liquid as you can see here this is the wall of the inner pipe 
and this is the wall of the outer pipe so from uh, so fluid is flowing from here to the inner pipe this is the phase a this is the phase b of the inner pipe so fluid is flowing here from fluid uh, from fluid to the wall of the inner pipe phase a from this walls to wall phase b uh, this is the conduction method this is the convection method and from solid uh, and from again from this solid to fluid and like this type of things uh, these are going on but basically it's from solid uh, from solid uh, sorry sorry from liquid to solid then from solid to liquid this type of uh, heat transfer method is involving in the heat exchanger this is the convection this is the convection this is the conduction so there will be a uh, separate conduction coefficient there will be a separate convection coefficient we will discuss this in the later lectures um, and differentiate and we will differentiate between them we will discuss the overall heat transfer coefficients and the following factors frame coefficients like all these types of the calculation with the formulas that how we can calculate this thing uh, these uh, factors so this was a general overview of the conduction and convection or the method of the heat transferring in the double pipe heat exchangers so as in this slide uh, there are some merits and some demerits of the double pipe heat exchangers these are the common merits and demerits although there are the several merits and demerits of the double pipe heat exchangers that we uh, that we studied but these are the main and everyone should know these merits and demerits so the merits of double pipe heat exchanger is that lower flow rate can be handled by double pipe heat exchanger high temperature services and high pressure services we can use in that in that services we can use the double pipe heat exchangers and its installation cost is very low as compared to other heat exchangers and ease of maintenance as compared to other exchangers like shell and tube heat exchanger and flexibility is there we can replace simple pipe with the youtube or youtube with the longitudinal frame pipes like this that we already studied and it provide lower heat transfer area as we told uh, so leakage problems are there in the double pipe heat exchangers can't handle the dirty fluids uh, but challenge tube can handle the dirty fluids low heat transfer area that we already discussed that if we are using the 10 feet of double pipe heat exchangers and 10 feet of the shell and tube heat exchanger just for understanding so heat shell and tube will provide more heat transfer area as compared to double pipe heat exchangers so this was about this point so as we can see in this slide the types of the tubes and the pipes available before discussing the types of tubes and pipes the uh, the we will discuss what is the pipe and tubes this is the common question that are uh, that has been asked in the interviews so the pipes are specified in terms of their diameter and the wall thickness and the wall thickness is indicated in the schedule uh, indicated by the schedule number so schedule number is equals to 100 p over s this is the formula for calculating and the schedule number uh, uh, for any any pipe really we studies uh, these things in the fluid fluid mechanics and in this the p is the maximum internal surface pressure services pressure and the s is the allowable bursting stress in the pipe material so the tubes are the thin wall and often oh sorry we are, the tubes are the thin wall uh, the tubes are the thin walled and often come in the coils tube size are indicated by outside diameter and wall thickness is indicated by BWG so in this the wall thickness is indicated by the schedule number but in this the wall thickness is indicated by the BWG Birmingham wire wall this is the main difference between the tubes and the pipes 
so the types of the tubes uh, and the pipes is about plain tube so we cannot say pipes as a tubes or pipe uh, we cannot say pipes a tube or a tube pipe so there is a difference between the tubes and pipe remember this difference uh, so we have the plain tube duplex tube and the fin tube these are the three types of the tubes that we are using in double pipe heat exchanger so in this we have the plain tube duplex tube and the uh, fin tube so plain tube is these are used when the corrosion on the either shell side or either on the tube side are approximately same so we can use the plain tubes and duplex tubes are used when we find that single material can handle cannot handle the corrosion on either on both side of the unit both side of means that uh, shell and tube so we use the duplex tubes for this service because it is made up of the two different metals are used in the duplex tubes and the fin tubes we are using usually employed for the heat transfer to the gases where film coefficient are very low usually fin tubes are using when we are using the gases uh, especially for the gases when we are using we use the fin tube in the double pipe heat exchanger because the um, uh, because the gases coefficients uh, heat transfer coefficient are very less they require more heat transfer area turbulence or the uh, time uh, resistance time we can say in the pipe so the material that which tubes are made up of commonly are the carbon steel carbon alloy steel stainless steel brass alloys cupronical nickel monel and reinforced fiber class this is this is the subject of the engineering material but it is a general information about the double pipe heat exchangers so further in the next lecture we will study about the calculations of the heat exchangers the formulas and some concepts about the falling factor how we can calculate falling factor overall heat transfer coefficient overall area and number of pins that are required for the particular services uh, annulus how we can calculate the annulus diameter uh, and annulus area or the pipe area so we will only do the thermal designing of the uh, or we can say process designing on the double pipe heat exchangers hydraulic designing uh, we are not doing in this module so after this we will discuss some heat uh, uh, shell and tube heat exchangers similarly like this some topics of the theory approximately same as the double pipe heat exchangers but there is a little bit difference in the constructions of the shell and tube heat exchangers so before starting shell and tube heat exchanger we will uh, solve one problem of the double pipe heat exchangers so thank you this is was all about today's lecture